So hello and welcome to the Computer Lab on YouTube. And if you are new to my channel, then welcome. And if you are a current subscriber, then welcome back. So in today's video, I'm going to be looking at the two different ways that I use to track text to an object um, and have it track across the screen uh, to create motion. The first way that I'm showing you now is not really a true um, way of tracking text to an object. It's more of a keyframe option, but it's one option that I do use. The second way, which I have now enlarged up on the screen, is the second way that I use to have the uh, something track an object across the screen. That could be text or anything really, and that's why I'm showing it there with text and a, uh, the swirling atom that you can see on the screen. So if you're trying to create or use text tracking or object tracking to an object in Apple Motion, then this video will show you the two different ways that I use to create this effect. Obviously, there are lots of different ways to do this. These are just the two ways that I use. So if that is something you're trying to do in Apple Motion, then please carry on watching this video. So let's get started. I already have Apple Motion ready to go here. I'm just going to create a standard motion project at 60 seconds long. Incidentally, if you want to jump to the second technique that I use, it's about the 13 minutes, 13, um, 13 minutes and 30 seconds into this video. Okay, so let's get started with the first technique. So what I'm going to do, I've already got some files uh, ready to go in Finder. So I'm just going to drag them into the media folder within Apple Motion. So I'm not going to go into any detail about how to manage files and folders within Apple Motion because that's not what this video is about. So this is the image we're going to use. We're going to be using this picture of a Nintendo Switch and I'm also going to be using a small gaming clip that I have here and drag that in as well. So you'll notice the two files. My image is a JPEG file and my uh, video that's going to run in the background or on the same sort of motion clip is an MP4. Uh, you can be working with different things. It doesn't really matter. So this is my media and in the layers there is currently nothing in there. But we're going to change that now by dragging the picture of the Nintendo Switch down into my bottom timeline. Uh, it's currently set at 60 seconds, so we'll drag it in. We can adjust that. Um, again, I might do that a bit further into the video. So you drag it into the timeline. And then I'm just going to reduce the size down a bit so I can see what I'm doing. And now I'm going to make the picture of the Nintendo Switch fill the screen, but also so it's got enough overlap at the edges of the screen that allows me to pan it from right to left without uh, losing some of the image. So you can see there as I drag it across the current size, it's not big enough uh, for me to get that panning action that I want to happen. So I'm just going to uh, make it slightly bigger and then drag it also up a bit just so it looks a bit more in key with what I want to do and you can see now so my keyframe is going to go from right to left like so and I'm relatively happy with that uh, for the sake of this video I could tweak it a bit more maybe make it a bit larger but we don't really need to do so at this point what I'm going to do is actually rename one of the layers the layer that I've already created which is called group at the moment you can leave yours default I'm just going to rename it main I'm going to do this because I want to show you something in a bit as we get a bit more into the actual video so just renaming that layer main I'm going to drag this clip of the video into my bottom timeline and I've got the same build up of layers in the bottom left hand corner which I can work with so I'm just going to drop it, make sure it's above the other clip, uh, like so as you can see the layers are built up, um, the same as if I clicked on the layer box just above. And that's my main group at the moment with the um, Nintendo Switch picture in there. So you can see now I have this other group that's got my video in. So this is important because the way that we, and the way that Apple Motion manages these clips. So my main layer there, which is my picture of my uh, Nintendo Switch, and I've got the video sat on top. So I think the next thing we need to do, it will, what we'll do, if I scroll forward, you'll see the video playing, uh, just so you can see what happens. So this is a 60 second clip currently. I think the video is longer than that, the actual gaming video clip, but my timeline of my initial Apple project, I set it to 60 seconds. So that's where the blue bar is. So you can see the video playing as I play it, and I want to resize that video so it sits um, onto my current project in a way that looks realistic. So the way that I do that is just go down to the select tool here and I'm just going to go to the distort command, pick up on distort, making sure that I've got the layer that I want to distort selected. And I'm just going to grab each corner and just drag them across um, so it looks like it's uh, sat within the Nintendo Switch where the screen sits. And again, you can spend longer doing this than I am going to do here. Uh, but I'm just going to tweak it so it looks something like uh, but if you are doing this uh, for real as a, a main job or something like that, then you'd obviously need to spend a bit more time 
making sure that they hide all these lines. You can see that top right hand corner, I'll just zoom it in a bit more so you can see it better. You can see it's still showing a small, a small amount of the screen underneath. So I want that to obviously show up better. So I just need to go back to my, make sure that I've got the video selected uh, on the layers menu and just drag these, um, these points around so they cover the actual screen underneath and covers it. And you can see that it's snapping to the actual point where it thinks the distort should be sat. But I think for the sake of this tutorial, I'm happy with that. So I'll just zoom back out to 100% so we can see the video in full. And I'm going to pick up on the project in my layers menu on the left hand side. So I've got no outlines and I'm going to hit play and we'll play the video and see what it looks like. Won't play it all, we'll just play the beginning. So you can see now as this is running, what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop this at the 15 seconds mark. And I'm going to add some text on top of the image. And the reason why I'm going to stop and leave it at the 15 seconds mark is I just want to touch on something that uh, sometimes can happen if you are not paying attention to what you're doing. So I'm going to stop it there 15 seconds and I'm going to add my text above the Nintendo Switch. And the reason why I've left the timeline or the playhead at the 15, because when you add something in, um, once you leave the playhead at that point, it will add it from that point onwards. So as I drag my text box now to add my text, which is Apex on Nintendo Switch, you can see in the bottom layer box in the timeline, it is only going to show that text from 15 seconds onwards. So say, for example, you wanted the text to pop up um, sort of halfway through the video or partly way into the video that you're playing or the uh, motion clip that you're creating, then you could set that by setting the time or where the playhead is. I want the text on this video to be showing uh, for the full length of the clip. So once I have finished setting all the parameters for the uh, text on the screen here, I'm then going to go and click on the project up in the top layers section so it gets rid of all the boxes around my different layers and I'm going to go down to the timeline and just scrub the playhead uh, in and out of the layer I've just created and you'll be able to see that I started at 15 seconds that's where I put the text and you see there so anything at that beginning bit it's not going to show the text so I just get hold of the layer on the left hand side drag it across and then to the start of my motion project like so and now the text will show throughout the whole of the 60 seconds of this clip. So I'm just going up to the top again, click on project so we can get a nice clean image and then hit the space bar uh, so it plays the actual clip. So at the moment we haven't got any uh, motion from right to left, but we will do that in a second using keyframes. So let's scrub to the beginning of the project and I touched on earlier about creating these different uh, groups in the layers box. So what I'm going to do is create a new group I'm going to call this one uh, text and I'm going to drag my text that it's currently put into the main uh, group. I'm going to drag that into the text group. And the reason why I'm going to do this is just to uh, show you something and how this works, because this is important uh, when we add the keyframe in a second. So we have this group here. Let me just call this video so we know where we're up to. So that one's video. We've got text and we've got the main uh, picture itself. And we'll might as well call that uh, switch just so we've got a bit of... Um, consistency across the different groups. So you notice now these are all in their own groups. So depending on what we uh, affect we apply to this group will depend on how they behave. So at this point we can drag layers into groups or we can drag groups into other groups as well. Uh, and for this point of this video obviously I'm going to drag my video clip into my switch picture group. So I want that to sit within my of a group like I say I can drag this layer in if I wanted to or I can drag the group in so we'll drag the group and put that within the switch picture and you'll notice within that group that video is actually sat on top of the switch again that's important because that's how we are viewing on the actual screen so it needs to be made sure it's sat on top and depending on what you are building or making will depend on how you build this up but basically anything uh, above will be shown on top of the screen. So at this point, we are going to add a keyframe. So I do that by clicking on that button there. But first, I'm just going to set my playhead to where I want to start my keyframe from, which is one frame in. Click on the keyframe there. So it's telling it that I want to start my keyframe at that point. And then from here, I need to now move my image across to the left uh, within a certain time span. So I'm going to set my playhead to 30 seconds, like so, and then what I'm going to do from there is go across to my uh, position in the properties tab on the left hand side that the showing the red icons, and I'm going to move that 
across to the end position I want it to be within 30 seconds. You can see I've got a green bar on the bottom there and that's indicating how it's going to ramp up and down. I'm not going to go into too much detail about that, uh, but you can adjust that as well. But to get the movement for this particular project, we'll just do it this way around. So at this point, all I'm doing here now is just setting my X point to the uh, final position that I want my keyframe to finish its movement on. So you can tweak it to where you want it just to be like I'm doing there. So I'm not showing any white on the right hand side. And you'll notice the text hasn't moved yet and that is purposely done like that so I can show you what's going on. So I'll scrub the playhead back to the beginning. We'll hit play. And what you see now is the actual image tracking for them 30 seconds going from right to left using them keyframes. And the important bit to note here, we put the video clip, if you remember, within the same group as the Nintendo Switch picture. So it's keeping them two items within that group that we applied the keyframe to, keeping them two items together, tracking along the same plane uh, using the same keyframe. And because we've got the text that's currently not within that group, it's not applying that uh, keyframe movement as it would be. So that's easily resolved. All we need to do is we need to get hold of the text, which we've currently left out of the box purposely, and drag it into the same group that's got the keyframes applied to it, which is this switch picture. So Again, you can scrub along and see that the text isn't moving. Drag the text, drop it in, make sure it's above because we want it to be above the picture of the actual Nintendo Switch. So now it's all within the same group that's got a keyframe applied to it. Click on project, hit play, and now all of a sudden everything's moving along that keyframe that we selected earlier uh, within that 30 second range. And that now we're creating this effect of uh, movement or motion and we've also got the video playing on the Nintendo Switch again, which gives it a bit of uh, a bit of character to the video. And we can also do other things from this point. Obviously, it's going to track to the 30 seconds. We're about 25 seconds into that now, and when it gets to the 30 seconds mark, it will stop and then just keep playing the uh, other video. But it's not going to do any more movement because we've not told it we to do any more movement. So for the sake of completion, I think we should just add the final sweep. So we'll go from right to left and then left to right. So let's select the keyframe like so. That picks up my last keyframe. I'm just going to move my playhead to the end of my timeline. And I'm going to add a final movement in my properties box. I'm going to reset that to zero. You'll notice the green bar at the bottom. One's got a slight curve and one's got a straight ramp. Uh, you can set them slightly different, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to leave them as they are. Uh, one's basically just a, a creep in motion and the other one's a, a straight singular motion. So it starts off slow and then speeds up slightly. Um, and then once you've got this completed, you can then play it like I'm doing now. Uh, and now what we should see from 0 to 30 seconds, it should go from right to left. And then from 30 seconds to the 60 seconds mark, it should go from left to right, uh, creating this effect of motion. And I've just gone from the left to right, just purely to show you that this uh, keeping the motion running gives it this nice effect that you can look at on the screen. So we'll just let this uh, run a bit longer so you get the overall effect uh, and then we'll I'll stop it um, and then we can have a look at the next part of this video which is looking at the motion tracking or match move option that is available in Apple Motion and that is uh, able to match the move for an object moving on the screen and that can be um, having an object like text tracking across doing the match move um, in Apple Motion. So let's pick the project up and let's delete this off the screen and let's get a new one on the go. So again, because this is a new project, I'll just scrub my playhead to the beginning of my timeline, which is the, still the same, 60 seconds. I'm now gonna drag a movie in, which is just some footage I filmed on my iPhone of a GoPro and drag it into my media folder, as you can see there. So then I'm gonna grab the media, drag it down into my timeline, uh, and it's just jumped off. So I just need to make sure it's at the start of my project, like so, and then I think we'll play it just to see, so you can see the uh, what the footage looks like. So all it is, is me moving the actual GoPro, so rotating it a bit, and then moving it up to the top right hand corner and then rotating it a bit again and moving it around a little bit like that just so it, um, the tracking has something to track and you can see the way the text sort of moves with the actual object itself uh, when we uh, do the uh, move match or the motion tracking in Apple Motion. So let's hit the stop there. Let's put it to the 
timeline there. So what I'm going to do is just drag the end of my clip because it was at 60 seconds. My clip is shorter than that. So I'm going to drag it uh, by moving this node along to the end of the clip. So now that that is my full length of clip up to that point there. So let's get back to the beginning. So at this point, I'm going to create a new group by uh, right clicking into the layers box just here. Create a new group. I'm going to call this group text. And then once I've named this group text, I'm then going to leave it selected and then go down to my text tool and then enter some text within this group. So it stays within that group as it will be at this point. So I'll drag a box out and then I'm going to enter some text. I'm going to put GoPro Hero 8 and I'm going to format that text by going across to the left hand side into the inspector. Make sure it's on text and to format and then format the text. So before we um, apply this effect, the thing to note with any type of video that you're trying to track the motion of or any type of item within a video is that you need some form of uh, sort of high contrast, something that the actual Apple Motion can pick up on. And the GoPro camera has this little white uh, GoPro uh, font in it that we're going to pick up on, which I'll show you now. Uh, so we need to go up to uh, make sure we've got the text selected the layer that we want to track. And then we want to go down to behaviors, motion tracking and then match move. And then we'll get this secondary box on the left hand side that's just popped up my, our match move property box. And what we're going to do is drag our little red icon that's in the middle and we're going to drag it to the point that we want to track or we want the Apple motion to try and track. So you can see I'm just going to pick up on this small box just underneath the G under GoPro and I'm going to let it go there. Now at this point we've told it that's the point we want to track and now we need to analyze. So you can see they've got this analyze button just above the box, the tracker preview is showing us. And once I click on analyze, the actual um, program will start to match the move of the point that I have told it to try and track. And it's going to track that with the actual text that we've told the layer that we want the match move to sit on. So now again, depending on how powerful your machine is, will depend on how quick this takes. I'm going to speed this bit of the clip up, but I think it took my machine, which is a 2020 MacBook Pro, about seven or eight minutes. It's one of the lower spec ones. It's not the high spec MacBook Pro, uh, but it's a 16 inch MacBook Pro and it took it, like I say, seven or eight minutes. So you can see that now I have zoomed in all Apple Motion is doing with this match move is to apply a keyframe to each individual frame. So like I said, I'm going to speed this section up uh, because otherwise we'll be sat just watching it applying these keyframes. So we'll get this speeded up. So that's not the actual true motion of it applying this match move. That's me speeding the video up. And then once it's finished that, I will also put the, uh, the time it took for my MacBook Pro uh, to complete it which it did it in 7 minutes and 25 seconds. So I'm just going to scrub my player to the beginning and then we're going to hit the play. Let's just put the project up and then we'll hit the play from here and then you should now see it tracking the video and the point I told it to and it's applied that tracking to the layer that I told it to do which was the text layer. Um, so that's why that we can put stuff in layers within groups and we can get it to do these different um, behaviors um, this particular one the match move to individual layers and groups so the reason that i explained and went into so much detail in the first part of this video about layers and groups is because it's important and it applies to this as well so now if we pick up on the text group that we created earlier you can see the match move behavior that's applied to that text group what we can also do if we keep that text group selected, we can then pick up on something out of um, our library here. So let's have a look through gadgets and we'll maybe pick this at, um, no, let's pick this one up, the swirly one that looks, uh, no, no, we'll stick with that swirly one. I was going to put something else on, but we'll, we'll have this to the side. But because we're dragging this into the layer that has the match move applied to it, we're just going to drag it underneath there. So now anything that's below there is going to have the same property or behavior that we've applied to that group or layer. So in our case, it's the text layer. We've already tried it. We know it tracks across just nicely. So I'm just going to adjust this atom to the size that I want, put it in the position that I want it to be in. Then I'm going to hit play on the playhead. In fact, no, not just yet. We'll just extend it out. Cause you can see that it's not done the actual full length. So the atom would have only showed for half of the clips and I'm just dragging it to the end of my full clip uh, then hit project. So it gets rid of all the bounding boxes and hit play or space bar. So you can see that both of them items that we have in that same layer or group, both being tracked using the match move uh, behavior built into Apple motion. Okay. So that is the end of the video. I hope this video was helpful. 
and educational. If it was, please do hit me up with any comments below. They are always appreciated. Please do subscribe to my channel and also please do hit the bell icon to be alerted to any new videos I make. Thanks again for watching the Computer Lab on YouTube and I hope this Apple Motion match move tutorial was helpful. Thanks again.